strategies and concepts discussed are for educational purposes only and do not represent specific investment, tax, or estate planning advice. Investing carries an inherent element of risk, and it is in everyone's best interest to consult a tax, legal, or investment professional. Beth Williams is an investment advisor representative of, and advisory services are offered through, USA Financial Securities Corp., a registered investment advisor. Megan Carney, Megan S. Carney PLLC, and Financial Art Builders are not affiliated with USA Financial Securities Corp. Welcome to Money Healing. I'm your co-host, Beth Williams. And I'm your other co-host, Megan Carney. We're here to talk about money and our feelings related to it. I'm a psychologist who specializes in helping sensitive people. And I'm a financial planner. We both talk to everyday people just like you about these topics. Everyone's mental health and money health journeys are so different. And as unique as we all are, there are some common themes when it comes to how our emotions impact our money and vice versa. And it's those common themes that we are going to be discussing together, both the themes themselves and some ideas from us about how to move forward and heal your relationship with money. Megan, you and I met like three years ago, uh, I think this month, uh, and we were just sitting at uh, dinner, I think, and you and I were talking about our jobs and uh, just for the sake of our listening audience, uh, we started to talk about how wonderful it would be if Megan could have an office right next to mine um, so that when I was done meeting with clients, I could just send them over to her. And I don't know about you, but it was a light bulb moment for me. It was yeah, in work, in personal finance, which is you know what I'm doing and working with individuals on their money. Um, that's very heavily dependent on decision-making and the decision-making process that the individual makes. And yet most of our training as financial advisors is around the numbers. And, you know, decision-making is obviously made with, you know, lots of different variables and lots of different data points. But at least from my perspective, they're very heavily related to our values and what it is that we value as, as people. And then we started talking about those values and those really came down to a lot of emotions and um, those different emotions that come up with money. It just became very, very clear to me that there's a lot of emotions around money, like oh, all yeah. kinds of them. It was, and when we were talking, I mean, you're a trauma therapist. You talk to people all day about their traumas. And um, I was thinking, you know, it, it could be something as, as easy to point to, maybe that's the right word, uh, about what traumas we dealt with. Like growing up poor is one that I hear a lot. Um, you know, I, I grew up poor. I Maybe I grew up with a parent that was um, some sort of a drug addicted parent. And so all of the money went towards dealing with that addiction. And we didn't know if we were going to have food or the lights on. And, and there was a big decision between those. But I mean, I've also heard about growing up in a war zone, you know, and having famine and food scarcity and, you know, having maybe a negative past experience with a financial professional. You know, all of these different traumas are, are really easy to point to. But then as you and I started talking about it, it was like, well, maybe there's also some ones that aren't as easy to point to um, mm -hmm. as a trauma. And there's things like shame and guilt and fear and a past pain and a scarcity mindset that got caused by all of this. And maybe it could be that we had a really high expectation of what our living standard was going to be and a dissatisfaction today because we grew up with a certain standard of living and that's not what we're living like today. So you and I started to talk through that and it was just a huge light bulb moment for me. Yeah, for me, it was simultaneously a light bulb moment and a like, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> moment. <laughs> right? like, like, of course, our emotions are going to impact what we do with our finances. Like, why wouldn't they? They interact with everything else. So it was also an of course moment because I was still a relatively new to private practice psychologist. And when I made that leap, I went into it knowing I had a leg up on some people just because of the clinic that I worked in um, in grad school. 
where we did get a glimpse into the billing world and what the money side mm. of things was like, but didn't really get taught um, the practicalities of every aspect of it or get it talked about as like, this isn't just to serve people. Mm. It is to serve people, but we do live in a capitalist society. We need money to survive. And while I was at, in that clinic, we had somebody who was really wonderful who got our books out of the red and mm. green, like not just black, green. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big moment. <laughs> right? And so there is like a, a something going on in the back of my mind where I was like, okay, like this this is an important thing. So I knew going into private practice that I had to be thinking consciously about making an income <laughs> that was sustainable yeah. for me. But I also had absolutely no clue because we weren't taught any of it. So you had the side of knowing all of the money things, right? And I had the side of knowing all the emotion things. And we've been learning through each other and through other sources through this whole process um, as our gears have been turning on this podcast, which has just been a lot of fun for me, actually, and a lot of like little light bulb moments along the way. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I mean, it became so clear to me when you and I started talking about it that, you know, the issues that I run into when I'm talking with clients about what we're going to do next, it's you know, all of my training is focused on the numbers. You know, if the numbers match up, then obviously that's the choice that you're going to make. And and yet when when I would run into some sort of roadblock, it was usually because of something that was, you know, in their past emotionally driven. And I mean, you and you've you've helped consult on my process so extensively and I appreciate that, but it was with you and several other professionals and clients that we would talk through values are a huge part of the upfront work that we do with bringing on a new family or a new client. Because if I don't know what you value, I don't know how the money is going to match up with that. And and it's not as simple as just the dollars and cents. And um, it was really it was really clear to me that there was a gap in the conversation. Like even just since you and I have been talking, I mean, we've been talking about doing this for like two years, I think <laughs> since we, since we sat down three years ago, we are like, wait a second. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 we need to do something with this. <laughs> um, Cause even just for me, it's made me a better advisor understanding that there's much, much more behind the scenes um, going on within the processes. And um, it's made, it's made my ability to hear that, and be a supportive environment for those conversations just so much better. And ever since we've been talking about it, um, we talked about how when you start becoming a financial advisor, one of the first things that they've mentioned is you need a group of really solid professionals that you can refer your clients off to, that you trust. And those are you know, tax professionals, elder attorneys, or we're working with divorce attorneys. There's a lot of different conversation around have a good accountant, have a good, you know, attorney that you can refer off to. But then there's this whole gap of do you have a therapist that you really, you know, can can dive into these emotional issues when you hit some sort of a roadblock with the client? You know, do you have a good mental health professional that you can refer off to. And and I've been talking with financial advisors for three years now about, do you have another professional in your book that you can refer off to everyone? And, and all of a sudden, they're also having a light bulb moment of, oh my God, that's exactly what I'm running into. <laughs> it's bigger than yeah. just the numbers. So much bigger. Yeah. One, one of the things that I learned is, is I was healing and I'm still working on healing parts of my money story was this idea that money is just a reflection of, mm. of other things that are probably going on in your life, right? It's just reflecting back to us some of the same issues that we have in life. And that was, that was a huge light bulb for me. And you brought up the idea of trauma earlier and how that plays into our money issues and our relationship with money. And sometimes we hear that word trauma and we're like, oh, no, that didn't happen to me. I have mm. nothing traumatic because we think about like the big stuff, right? 
we think about like serving in a war or watching somebody die or almost dying ourselves, something really big like that. But there are a lot of little traumas. I call them like death by a thousand paper cuts because they're like the little emotional things that just one, you're like, fine, I can deal with that. And we don't realize how many of those little things have added up over the course of our lifetime. joining us on today's episode, our very first episode of Money Healing. We hope you enjoy our next episode where we're going to be discussing our money stories. And you can connect up more with Megan at her website, which is going to be here in the link as well as my website. And we look forward to seeing you next time.